Greetings. Welcome to Signature Sense. My name is Ryan Irving and today we're going to be looking at Panad Clubman. We're going to answer the question, is Panad Clubman signature worthy? And I'm going to talk a little bit about what my definition, how I like to approach the signature scent definition. We're going to look at its charm, its background, its character, its performance, which is very surprising, and also we're going to look at, uh, we're going to make a judgment at the end and figure out what we're going to do with Panad Clubman. So let me get into next a little bit of the background of Panad Clubman until we can really understand what we're talking about here. Okay, before I talk about the background of Panad Clubman, I want to quickly run through my definition of how we're approaching this premise of signature scent. Now, what is a signature scent? So for me, uh, a signature scent is one that feels natural to you that you are easily able to bond with. They could be cheap, they could be niche, it doesn't really matter. So these are ones that you reach for. You do that to indulge a certain state of mind, a certain feeling. So I contrast the signature sense with what I call collectibles. Collectibles are sort of those ones that are very satisfying to own, but you don't actually wear them. So signature scents in a nutshell are scents that you're very comfortable with, that they invoke a certain state of meat. It doesn't have to be, um, you can have multiple signature scents in my world. You know, I have several that I like to look at and lean on uh, for different different things. One, one of them, I have a class that kind of is like a comforting. And then there's one that's more of like my extroverted, my crowd pleaser. And like this, there's different variations. I like the signature scents. My hobby is to find scents that have that X factor that I bond with as opposed to collectibles. I know I've seen a lot of the uh, YouTube reviewers and who have these massive collections that, you know, take up space. I don't want to go through that. I think maybe there's a point that I would look into, but for now, I'm really just looking at getting ones that I'm actually going to wear. Cause that's the fun of it is actually wearing the scents, not just having the bottle. Okay, so that's my little spiel on signature scents. Okay, so to understand Pinod Clubman, we have to look at its origin story. Now, Pinod Perfumes was founded in 1810 by, now forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, it's a French perfumer, Edouard Pinod. And Edouard Pinod was is a very famous fellow back in the time. Apparently, he first set up shop in the heart of Paris's perfume district. And after doing so, he quickly became famous, so much to the point where Queen Victoria gave him, they called it a royal patent, to um, import perfumes. And then after that, other monarchies followed. And what happened is it culminated in this guy, Pinod, Edward Pinod, becoming almost all but the exclusive importer of perfumes into Europe at the time. Now in 1810, he ended up buying out this perfume house called Le Grand Perfume House, and he created Pinod Perfumes. Now, Pinot Clubman wasn't part of the original founding of that perfume house. Apparently what happened was they were making perfumes. They were quite expensive though, and they weren't really taking in the American market. So to answer that, he wanted to create something uh, cheaper and more affordable. And they created the Pinot Clubman line. According to the information around the 1900s is when it really took off, became internationally recognized. And the rest is, as they say, history. Pinot Clubman is, to this day has stood the test of time as a um, barbershop smell that you can still find in modern barbershops. You can get, get these at CVS drugstores, Walgreens. Um, you can find them in medicine cabinets. There's a lot of people who are in the uh, shaving community who talk about Pinot Clubman. There's blogs. It's profound that this fragrance was created around 200 years ago and is still so popular. And we're going to talk about a little bit why that is in the next section where we talk about Pinod's character. Okay, so Pinod's character, why this scent to me has is so popular and even to this day it really comes down to two things, is the way that it smells and its accessibility. So Pinod's official notes that are that is reported to have, uh, which I'm going to talk about the main accords in a moment when I get out of it, it says to have fresh orange, lemon, and bergamot in the top with a heart of jasmine, geranium, and lavender and it's all built on this base of musk. Now, Pinod's character is very gentlemanly. This is the character that this kind of, this aura of Pinod, it's got a very gentlemanly, dapper character. You feel groomed, 
you feel sophisticated, and you feel classy. Now, the main accord that I get from Panade by far is the musk, this powdery musk. And the powdery musk is what's being painted here. So if you can imagine, if you've never smelled Panade, which you probably have and you don't realize it, but if you have never smelled Panade, just imagine a very powdery smell that's kind of painted with this uh, floral and lavender accord. Now I contrast this against the Brut EDT, which I talked about in my last video. The Brut also has a powdery, but the, the floral lavender smell is turned up a little bit, where this is more predominated for me, to my nose, the, the, uh, the powdery note is the, the predominant one. Now I actually layered both of them, and I find them to be perfect complements to each other. So that's what Panade smells like, the main accord, the musk, the floral and lavender smell. And it creates this gentlemanly, dapper, groomed feeling. You feel like you've just left a barber shop. Now, the second thing I talked about is accessibility. You can find this, I think I got this bottle for around $9, $8 or $9 online. I saw it in CVS drugstore uh, the other day for a little bit over nine bucks. And again, it's cheap, but it's also everywhere. You know, you can find it online, you can find it in the stores. Your barber or barbers in your area probably have this stuff. So it's very accessible. And this creates this charm of Panade. It's a very, uh, you know, endearing, lovable scent. It's very simple, it's elegant, it's cheap, but you don't smell cheap while wearing it. Now in the next section, I wanna talk about Panade's very surprising performance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Panade's performance. Now, I was shocked at Panade, which is supposed to be, as you can see, an aftershave. One of the first things that I found about Panade was this stuff projects and in a good way and, and also in a bad way. And what I found that it's, it's uh, the problem with it is for me, there is something in this stuff that gives me a headache. I've learned that I have to spray it on the back, like I spray it on the back of my neck, the backs of my shoulders, and that's where I have to leave it because when I first started wearing it, I was spraying it on my neck, my chest, like soaking my clothes in it and that was a big mistake I, it really gave me a headache even sometimes in the back of my body it's it's still there's something in this that gives me a little it has given me a little bit of a headache i mean this stuff is real strong one time i got out of the shower i got dressed and i put all my clothes on i sprayed this on and i went in my car to go do an errand and this stuff i'm glad there was nobody else in the car with me because i would have gassed them out i gassed myself out in the car like i was hating it i was loving it and hating it at the same time because i do love the smell it's just something about it um this stuff has not only does it have great projection it has great longevity especially if you put it on clothes it really the, it really the, sticks to clothes and even the skin, I was taking a shower hours later uh, after I put it on, and I was still getting wafts of this stuff. And for an aftershave, it truly is uh, pretty remarkable. So the performance for me is uh, very, very good with Panade. It outperforms the Brute EDT that I have, the Brute EDT cologne that comes in the glass bottle. This stuff way outperforms that Brute EDT. I do like to layer them because the Brute has the nice floral and lavender that's a little bit more turned up where this has more of the powdery stuff turned up and they make a perfect combination together so performance is very very good i haven't worn it long enough to get any compliments i've only had it for maybe a couple weeks give or take probably less than that i did have one woman tell me it smells like a nice barber shop smell but that's it so far um I, in my opinion it's a very safe scent as long as you don't go heavy on the trigger what i've actually done with it is I've decanted it into this, uh, I think it's like a, it's a four ounce glass bottle, uh, simple spray, got it at Whole Foods, has a decent atomizer, shoots a lot of juice out. Uh, I decanted that, I spray some on, and um, this stuff performs very, very well. So it's one that you can probably get at least four hours, probably more out of it. And I personally, I'm okay with that. I think it actually lasts a little bit longer, especially if you spray it on your clothes. And this is in cool weather. It's, I, mean, I live in Portland, and right now the weather is 40s, 50s. If it was hot out, it's probably going to do a project a little bit longer for a longer period of time. Okay, so in the next section, I'm going to give my final judgments about Panade as far as being a signature scent. Okay, so Panade as a signature. Is it a signature or is it a collectible? Well, what I can tell you about Panade in my experience, which I myself have been very surprised at. Now, I have... Um, 
access to some very nice nice scents. I have two of my, what I call my masterpieces, which I'm constantly on the hunt for more. I have Givenchy Gentlemen. Those are my two absolute loves when I, they're, they're so smooth, they're refined, they're absolutely beautiful. And when I put them on, it's just incredible uh, experience for me. They're almost to the point where being sacred. Now, despite that, I find myself reaching for Panade as my day scent. I look forward to taking a shower and putting on. When I first got it, I was a little taken, I was a little overwhelmed with the powder ne powder ne powdery ness to it, if I may say that right, can't tongue tied. Powderiness of it because it triggered a memory of what I had forgotten about when I first smelled this was actually in the form of the talcum powder. If you ever seen those big green shaker bottles that's got the big gentleman guy on there. And uh, that's how my first exposure. So when I smelled it, it kind of brought me back to that. But uh, just like when I started off saying my definition of signature sense, for whatever reason, when I gave this a good solid wear, my nose really liked it. I, I really kind of bonded with it. And, and it just makes me feel clean. It makes me feel groomed. And I noticed when I put it on, it makes me want to like clean up my beard, make sure my hair is nice and, and there's you know no pieces out, 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 out of place. I'm wearing nice clothes. I, I, I just look nice. Even I'm going to do a simple errand. Panade invokes that sort of classiness, uh, a classy, groomed, clean feel for me. And so for me, Panade is definitely a signature, one that I am reaching for constantly. I'm actually surprised about it, but for some reason, I'm, I'm sort of addicted to this stuff along with the Brute EDT that I uh, sometimes pair it with. So, Panad Clubman, who is it for? Definitely is uh, for a more mature vibe. I think uh, younger guys could definitely pull it off. I mean, certainly younger guys are going to get their haircuts and get this slapped on. I would say go easy on it though. It does project for me a lot. So this stuff is best for going a little bit lighter. So you have that, you have that gentlemanly aura without being a little bit, oh, a little bit too much, right? Um, I think it's great for uh, older guys, any age group, if you just want to smell clean. Um, if, it, if you are used to like the really uh, sweet candle-like scents, like I call them, the, the designers that you find in like Nordstrom and all that, this is going to be a little bit of a shock to your nose and um, you may take some readjustment. But if you find you want to give it a shot, it's very easy to get into. It's about eight or nine bucks. And I got this bottle for like nine bucks. I saw it at CVS for a little bit over nine. It's not a huge investment. I do recommend, I read a reviewer, he noticed this, the quality of the smell was a little bit better when he had it in a glass bottle versus the plastic. He didn't have the plastic -y vibe. I've also noticed it does smell a little bit smoother, so I do recommend uh, putting it in a glass bottle for the best experience, but use it as you wish. So yes, I recommend Panade. It's going to be in my collection for a while as long as I can manage the headaches. If you can, it's great and uh, I highly recommend it. So. If you enjoyed watching this video, I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. Do you wear Pinot Clubman? What is your experiences with wearing it? Do you get the headaches? How does it make you feel? Leave me a comment below. And if you want to see more videos, I plan on doing more reviews. Uh, I'm going to be getting more classic scents. I'm going to do a video about my Givenchy Gentleman, my Polo Green. I'm getting in, I think tomorrow, a vintage Brut Fabergé uh, original cologne, which I'm really looking forward to smelling. I'm also thinking about getting some vintage Old Spice. And like this, if you like that kind of style, the classic formulations, check out my channel. Make sure you subscribe so you can get the notifications. Wishing you the best. God bless.